Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today and we bless you. You are our God. There is none like you. We give you praise, mighty God, because you have brought us again into your presence to hear from you. Speak to us, mighty God. Speak to us, everlasting Father, and let your word reach down to everyone in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. I say in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Securing good and lasting success. Don't forget also that our service starts 10 o'clock in the morning. It's very important. Early to bed, early to rise. That's what they used to tell us when we were in primary school. So, glory to God. Securing good and lasting success, part four. Uh, last week, I was on putting God first. But I didn't really finish that. So I'm going to tidy that one up for us today. Amen. Remember Matthew 6.33. What does he say? Everybody knows that one by heart today, right? Seek ye what? First. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. First. First. And all these things shall be added to you. And we said it that the kingdom of God should be the driving force of our lives. If you read the early part of that, Jesus Christ said, take no thought for your life. What you shall wear. What you shall eat. Are you following me? He said, don't think God don't want you to have them. God knows you need them. Can I hear you say God, God knows? God knows? Oh, God knows you need them. What God is saying is, don't let those things be the driving force of your life. Let the kingdom of God and his welfare be the driving force of your life and God will add all those things to you. Amen? Can I hear you say, add them, Lord? Lord. You see, you know how to say that one because you are looking for all of them. Amen? So putting God first is the key. Minding the things of the kingdom first is the key. And we, we, we read from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10 also last week that says, Honor the Lord with the first, with what? Yeah, the first, the first fruit of your, uh, honor the Lord with the first fruit of your substance. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Mulat, the way you are looking at me this morning, you are the one who, honor the Lord with thy substance and the first fruit of all thine increase. Amen. I put it this way, honor the Lord first with the first and first. Are you following me? With your substance, not your leftover. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Now watch. He did not say give to the Lord your substance. If he says give to the Lord even your substance, that may still be correct. But he used the word honor. That is stronger. You get my point? You can give anything, right? But honor is different. You understand me now? When I honor you, I do it with utmost regard. You understand me? I do it with utmost regard and respect. Amen. Honor the Lord with the, your substance. That means with what you have. And with the first fruit of all thy increase, what will happen? Verse 10. He says, so shall thy bonds be filled. It's like what Matthew 6, 33 says. Seek him first, then he adds to you. Honor him, he will add to you. Honor him, he will give to you. Amen. Honor him, he will deliver you. Honor him, he will, he will promote you. Honor you, he will provide for you. And we said last week, the way we honor God is by giving him the first place in our lives. They said concerning Daniel, we cannot find any occasion against this Daniel except it has to do with his God. Because Daniel honors his God. They know. They know there is no law you make against the God of Daniel that Daniel will listen to you. Do you understand me? And they know there are a lot of other people that would rather hold on to their position. Are you following me? But Daniel would rather say, take your position. I honor my God. 
They knew that. So they set the trap for him. We know the story, right? They set the trap for him. Are you following me? That nobody should pray to the God of heaven again. Daniel said, if you want your uniform, take it. But I will pray to my God. If you want your position, take it. I will pray to my God. Are you following me? So that is, that is beyond just being religious. Amen. And they put the trap and they caught him. But what happened? Is God delivered them. Honor him, he will hurt to you. Honor him first, he will deliver you. Honor him first, and you know, Daniel now became the first. He now had a better position than he had before. The position you are not ready to use to serve him is the one he will not protect. You get my point now? Are you following the point? The, 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 the position, the, the, the things you have that it, you think you cannot use to serve him is the one that you will not be able to keep. But when you serve him, and we said also, the way we honor God is by giving him the first and the best. No, sorry. By giving to him first. Not just the first. By giving to him first. By giving to him first and the best. Elijah said to that woman, make for me what? First. And then go prepare for yourself. And by simple calculation, after she made for Elijah, there should not remain anything, right? But when you put your life in his hand, you don't lose on the earth. Amen. Amen. That's the life of faith we live by. And it keeps sustaining. And we said the way you honor God is also by serving him first. Not looking for when you have time so that you can do it. No. It's time first. Amen. By serving in force. And I said last week, as you do this, God will supply you abundantly. Amen. And we went on further on the subject of honor in Malachi chapter 1 verse 6, where he said, A son honors his father. Right? And a servant honors his master. And God said, now let's look at it. If you say, I am your father, where is my honor? And if you say, I am your master, where is my fear? Because the way I see it, you keep despising my name. You treat me the way you like. You don't treat me with respect. You despise my things. That's how God puts it. Wherein you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. And I said to us, contemptible means despicable. It means des deserving context. It means something standing of low estate. Something that you don't consider. You know, you know, in... Um, no, I won't use Nigeria. I will use Congo this time. In Congo, a dog is never part of the family. Is it? What did you say? You have dog as a member of your family? I have plenty of dogs. They are not part of my family. But my dogs eat well. Oh. But in Congo, when you eat finish, you use your teeth to remove all the flesh from the bone. Make sure there is nothing there, then you give the bone to the dog. Eh? Even in Ethiopia, it's not how you do. You, 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 you think, you say, oh, let my dog, he say, in America, there are dogs eat first. That, that one is not how we do, right? You eat, the, when your stomach is full, there is nowhere to put the meat. Okay, what's the name of the dog? You can, you can take this one now. Huh? But I'm trying to use it for a point. That's how many of us treat God. When we have done what we want, are you following me? Eating what we want, spent what we want, and anything that remains of it, why are you smiling? You, are, you have dogs in Addis? That's how you treat your dogs too, I'm sure. <laughs> because all of us can identify with what I'm saying, right? But like there is a song. How do you treat God? Do you treat him like God or like dog? Don't treat God like dog. He deserves the first and the best. Do you understand me? It's not after you have eaten. It's not after you are satisfied. Then you remember him. That's why it is not working. That's why he said in Malachi chapter 1 verse 8. Look at it. He says, and if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And that's a heavy word, evil. If you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will they be pleased with thee or accept thy person? And you remember, when you read the story of Cain and Abel, God 
did not accept the person of Cain and his sacrifice. You remember? When things are not done right, he denies you, your person, before him. You will not be denied. Glory to God. That's why Paul encourages us to set our affection on things above. Let the things of God be your driving force. Amen. Let the things that concerns his house, concerns his church, concerns his people be your driving force. And we read also from 1 Chronicles 29 about David. Verse 2. 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 2 about David. He said, now I have prepared with all my might. Can I hear you say with all my might? Did you hear that? I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. Amen. I have prepared 1 Chronicles 29 verse 2. I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. That's how we serve him. With all, that's why Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, and with all thy soul. Thou shalt. I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. And verse 3, he said, because I have set my affection to the house of my God. Those are key things that get our lives moving. Amen. Amen. I'm still trying to reflect on how far we went last week. And God himself confirmed David's affection. Psalm 91 verse 14. He said, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up on I because he has known my name. Are you following me? So when your affection towards God is highly demonstrated in the life you live, you keep seeing his divine intervention in the affairs of your life. And we said last week, at the root of putting God first is your love for him. Amen. That's at the root. They that love him. Amen. And when they ask Jesus that um, question, he said, this is the first and the great commandment. And what is it? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. You shall love him. With every fiber in your body, you shall love him. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy, all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Thou shalt love him. And he said, the second is like unto you, unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and as thyself. He said, on this hang all the laws and the prophets. Amen. The love of God is the key to securing good and lasting success. And that's why 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For eyes have not seen, verse 9, nor he has heard, neither has entered into the heart of men what God has prepared for them that love him. The things of God are reserved for them that love him. So my question is, do you, do you love him? Amen. Do you love him? How well do you love him? Amen? The things of God are prepared for them that love him. For them that love him. Amen. David said, because I have said, his, uh, God said about David, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up on night because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Amen. And we listed all those benefits, deliverance, promotion, answers, and all that. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of what? Love. You love God, you love your neighbor. That is all. But Jesus said, that's all the summary. Anything else you are talking, you are wasting your time. Everything is inside that. Amen. Everything is inside it. He said, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. It's a kingdom of love. The love you display to God and the love you show to your neighbor. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of love. Who can tell me why? Because God is love himself. Amen? Amen. So anything done out of love does not belong in this kingdom. Anything done out of love is not reckoned with in this kingdom. Anything done out of love has no weight 
in this kingdom because this is a kingdom of what? Love. What is love in French? Amore. I know French. I told you. I learned French from Mobutu's CD, DVD. I, I know Amaric too, but we are not talking Amaric today. Amen. Anything that is not done in love is not reckoned with. This, listen to me carefully today. Even, you know, Paul said, you can give your whole body to be burnt. If there is no love, it is this zero. Anything that is not done in love, are you following me? Is not reckoned with in this kingdom. It's love to God and love to your neighbor. Because God is love. God is what? First John chapter 4 verse 16. First John chapter 4 verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is what? Love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Did you get it? God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwells in God and God in him. So if you are out of love, you are out of God. That's why I see the way some Christians behave and I wonder whether we are reading the same Bible. If you are out of love to God or to your fellow men, you are out of God. Because God is love. We are in a kingdom motivated and rooted in love. Amen. Amen. Have you read 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 before? Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew enough. It was love in him that made, him, made us his children. Are you following me? It was love in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only because his son. It was love in him. It was an act of love. For why we are yet uh, uh, sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. Every plan of God requires the platform of love to deliver. Amen? Every plan. That is as you, as you let your heart, the first place in your heart to be secured for him first. Glory to God. I said glory to God. That's why he said, Proverbs 23, verse 26. My son, I don't want your money. I want your heart. Huh? Give me your heart. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Give me what? Your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. Give me your heart. Let me occupy that first place and do what I say. Give me your heart and do what I say. Give me your heart. So you're doing what he says. He's doing it out of love in itself, not out of compulsion. Are you following me? Not because you are forced, but because you love him. Amen. I said amen. amen. Not because you are forced. You need a heart for God. You need a heart for God to make a mark on earth. Because the quality of your love for him determines the strength of the mark you make here on earth. He said, because of my affection towards the house of my God, you love him. You commit your life to him. You love him. Your heart is rooted in that love for him because you love him. And all that he has, he also has prepared for them that love him. Amen. I said amen. amen. Because you love him. You do everything out of love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. That is the first and the great commandment. And we read about Solomon. First Kings chapter 3 verse 3. How many of us know about the story of Solomon? Right? And the Bible says, And Solomon, first Kings chapter 3 verse 3, And Solomon loved the Lord. Is that not an outstanding statement? And Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statues of David, his father. He, so you see the two. Give me your heart and observe my ways. You see the two? He loved the Lord walking in the ways of God, if I put it that way. He loved the Lord walking in the statues of his father, David. 
And how did he prove that love? Verse 4. And the king went to give me unto sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings. He demonstrated his love with his giving, with what he gave him. If you love him, you will give to him. Because you always give, if I use the word carefully, I don't want to say carelessly, to the one you love. A thousand burnt offerings to prove his love. To prove his love. A thousand burnt offerings the Solomon offer upon the altar. And look at the way it goes. When he demonstrated his love for God, God gave him all he needed. And the Bible says in verse 5, And in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. We prayed earlier and I quoted Matthew 7, 7. Right? What does Matthew 7, 7 say? Ask and you shall receive. Right? Ask and you shall receive. But then he said, and the king went to give you unto sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. No, no, no. Go to verse 5. Verse 5. And the Lord in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, now ask what I shall give thee. Why? Number one, because you have to ask to be given, to receive. But you see, you also give to be given. <laughs> and because Solomon has what? He has given. God has no choice but to give back. Are you seeing the two corrections? Matthew 7, 7. Ask and you shall receive. Luke, Luke, Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Solomon gave massively a thousand burnt offerings that means he must be giving back and the lord came to initiate that process and said well you have given to me i have to give back to you but what do you want me to give back to you is that clear now that's the process what do you want me to give back to you because you have provoked the hand of heaven to return to you in multiple folds out is like they're now asking you, well, you have done something for us. How do you want us to pay you? You understand me now? How do you want us to pay you? You can say, just give me my cash. They say, we we'll give you check. Said, the country where I come from, check doesn't mean anything. I want to see the money like this and count, <laughs> and count it one by one. And you find, How do you want us to pay you? That's what God was asking Solomon. You have given your love offering as reached heaven. The Bible says, and the Lord smelled a good smell, a good savour. It reached heaven. And God said, You have given now. How do you want me to do what? Give back to you. And of course, you know this story. And Solomon said, Give me a wise and an understanding heart. Hallelujah. Because it is still the same to today. The kingdom of God operates on the principles of giving and receiving. As long as the heart remains, seed time and harvest shall not, shall not cease. So I ask you the question. Have you been given what you think will make God? Are you following me? To ask you, how do you want me to pay you? Amen? Amen. Do you think what you have been given will move God to come down to say, how do you want to be paid this time? Because Solomon moved the hand of God with what you gave. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory to God. Your giving, let me, I'm going to touch that because that's where I'm closing today, goes to prove that you, the sincerity, that's why Paul puts it in, in, um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. He said, not by the occasion of others, but to prove the sincerity of your love. Because whom you love, you give to. Oh, what are you talking about? Whom you love, you do what? I didn't hear you. I know you are angry this morning with what I'm talking about. But it doesn't matter. I will still finish. Eh? Whom you love, you give to. Without coercion. Coercion, right? Without anybody pressing you. Are you following me? It is a, it's what we all know. So we said, how do we therefore now put God first? Because we're still talking of putting God first. Scripturally, the first simple, practical, and neat step of demonstrating that God is first in your life is with your tithe. With what? 
That is the first. It's a demonstration of the fact that you own me. You are first. And that's when you do it with knowledge and understanding. It's not another, tithe is not another word for offering. I think I've taught that one many times. Because when you read Malachi, it says in tithe and offering, right? They are different. They do different things. The tithe and the offerings are different and we know that. Tithe is not in itself even given. It is a covenant demand. Securing yourself in the covenant. When you are in a country, you pay tax, right? Do you consider tight as giving offering to the government? They say in America, you can kill somebody in the courtroom. And lawyers would see argue, you go free. But when you don't pay your tax, there is no amount of lawyer that will make you go free. <laughs> you go to jail. <laughs> you, you can kill somebody in front of a judge like this. Then the lawyers will say, you see, uh, it was what his father did to him 30 years ago. Uh, they will be arguing. They say, okay, let him go. But you don't pay tax. Eh? Go check. <laughs> because why? That connects you, right, to the country itself. Everything hangs on that. You get my point? It's the same. The tithe you pay connects you with the covenant. It's at the root of it. You are saying, I acknowledge you as my God. Are you following me? I acknowledge you as my God. Of all that I am, this is your own part of it. This is your deal. You get my point? It's an acknowledgement. I call it the token of the covenant. It's an acknowledgement of that. And that's why it's fixed. It's fixed. Amen. Glory to God. We all know that, and I'm, I'm not making that the subject of my teaching today, just making clarification. So, paying it is not subjected to circumstances. If you read in Deuteronomy, I don't want to go there, but he said, I have not taken out of it in my morning, neither have I given to the dead, neither have I taken for any unclean use. No, it's not yours. You get my point? You give it to him as it is. But the offering is different. Offering is at your discretion. As a man proposes to, in his heart, let him give. But then, it also goes to show how well you love him. Because that becomes a driving force there. It is in tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. So as you keep demonstrating your love to God. I did a teaching some years ago about money. Your money is you. Are you following me? Your energy, your strength, your intellect. Are you following me? Is what is packaged in what you call money today. So when you offer your money, is an offering of yourself, of your energy, of your strength, of your intellect, of your services. Amen? You went to your car inside service time. Yeah? I think it must be money you went to bring up. That's the only reason. Amen. Jesus is Lord. When it comes to offering, it's as a man proposes. And it's a measure of your love for him. It's your instrument of honor. Do you get what I say? Your offering is an instrument of honor. To demonstrate how you love and honor him. Jesus is Lord. It's your gift of appreciation. If I put it that way. That's why Paul says it is to prove the sincerity of your love. But the Lord Jesus Christ made another point out of it. He said in Luke 6, with the measure you give, that's the same measure. Not the amount, measure. So many, people, many of us, we limit our blessing through our offering. Because when you give in low measure of your size, you also receive in the same measure. You get my point? So you're giving, the higher it is in your measure, the higher your return from heaven is in all dimensions of blessings. And the Lord Jesus Christ brought that one out for us. Because it also go a long way to prove that you love him. We've always said it this way, if you love, you give. 
and we use that popular scripture, John 3.16. I think everybody knows John 3.16 of it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved that he did what? He gave. I will always put it this way. If you love him, you give to him. If you love him, you give to him first. If you love him, you give him your best. If you love him, you give him your heart. You want me to repeat that? Amen? If you love him, you give to him. If you love him, you give to him first. If you love him, you give to him your best. And if you love him, you give him your heart. You get the sequence? You give him your heart. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Your offering is a gift you give to God and it is an expression of your love for him. Hallelujah. God does not command it, but it is an expression of your heart for him. Your tithe, on the other hand, is a statement of your commitment to him by covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. I say, Jesus is Lord. When you give him your heart, that is where it all is. When you give him your heart, every other thing becomes easy to do. To serve him, to worship him, to give to him, to do what he says becomes easy. Because you have what? Given him your heart. Amen. Let him take over. And you know when you give your life to Christ, that's what you say. I open my heart, I give my heart to you, and all that, all that. And that's true. When you give him your heart, it's like the giving of let, let me read a scripture. Second Chronicles chapter I'm sorry, Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse four. Hear what Paul says. He said, Pray not with much entity that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the of ministry to the says. And this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. They gave themselves. So giving what they didn't even have, because the Bible talks of their abject poverty, was easy. When your heart, that's what we're saying. That's why your giving goes to prove whether you love him or not. Because when your heart, are you following me, is truly after him, you will give everything, you will still be wondering, I hope I did enough. Do you get my point? That's, that's how it is. When your heart is truly out for him, is, it will be his own first. Nothing will take his place. There will be the panting of your heart after him. There will be the panting of your heart after his, all, his house. There will be the panting of your house after the gospel because you love him. Because you love him. May that love fill your heart again this morning. The Bible talks of the love of God as we shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. When you give him yourself. Doing whatever he says becomes a delight. Because his commandments are not grievous. When you give him yourself. Doing whatever he says becomes what? A delight. It becomes very easy for you. you and in so doing, you entreat his favor. Psalm 45 verse 12. The daughter of Tyre shall be there. Even the rich among men will entreat your favor with gifts. Amen. So we do that every time. You use your resources to entreat his favor. Put up that Psalm 45 verse 12 up for them. I've just read it off it, but put it up as I close. He said, even the daughter of Tyre shall be there. The rich among men will entreat your favor with gifts. Hallelujah. You open up the door of favor to yourself. Your resources to entreat his favor. You use what is available to you to entreat God's favor. I see an end come to all your struggles this morning. I say, I see an end come to all your struggles this morning. God's favor will answer for you. Hallelujah. Is that there? Yeah. Even the daughter of Diastar shall be there with a gift. And even the rich among men, among the people, will entreat thy favor. So your offering goes to entreat God's favor when you do it with your might. And God's favor is the cure for man's misfortune. Amen. May that favor answer for you this week. Amen. May everywhere you turn today, may the favor of God speak for you. May where it matters, 
May the favor of God exalt you there in the name of Jesus. So let's endeavor to put him first. Amen? Seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. What the world is running after will be coming to you free of charge because you serve him first. Amen? Because you honor him first. Because you do first what he says. What the world is struggling for will come to you cheap. Amen. It's time to serve him and honor him. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Can I hear you say, I love you, Lord. You are my God. My heart is for you. You have a special place in my heart. I honor you in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for grace from above to deliver the same. Lord, I pray that the impact of this word will begin to find fulfillment in these lives. And as they stand and serve you, as they stand and demonstrate their love for you, Lord of heaven, let your favor speak mightily for everyone. I declare this week the week of favor for you. That as you turn wherever you turn, the favor of God will speak for you. The favor of God will give to you. The favor of God will add to you. The favor of God will enlarge your coast in the name of Jesus. Receive the baptism of his favor this morning in the name of Jesus. And your returning here will be filled and satis he said, satisfied with favor, full of the blessings of God. May that same blessing answer for you this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I say in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Put your hands together as you take your seats. Hallelujah.